See y'all this morning. We love you. Appreciate you being here. Uh, we're going to get ready to open up a praise and worship. But before we do, let's go ahead and uh, just bow our heads and, and seek the Lord in prayer this morning. Father God, we just uh, we thank you for your spirit that's here with us this morning. You said if two or three of us get together in your name, that you would be here. Father God, we can't do anything apart from you. So Father, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us, Lord, that you'll anoint the pastor to preach your word. We pray for us, your people, to have ears to hear what your spirit says, Lord. <clears throat> Father God, we pray that you'll change hearts, transform lives, Lord God, heal the sick, deliver those in bondage, Lord. And set the captives free. We just thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. We thank you that you're here and that you're moving in, in the church, Lord. Father, we pray that you anoint the praise and the worship. We pray that it's a pleasing sacrifice to you. And Father God, we just pray that uh, you'll move in our lives here and for everybody that's not here for whatever reason. Father God, have your hand upon them, Lord. Touch their lives and lead them by your spirit. We ask and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go to page 786. How about we stand up and give God some praise?
103. All hail King Jesus. And do you think about today and what I mean? I do every single day. You know, what would, what would it be like to look at Jesus' face? <laughs> And say well, and we will say welcome home. Well done. Good
think they're neighbors here, but uh, got Land Hookie from their church today. <laughs> but Jim was telling me that he was, uh, he helped build this uh, building. Wow. And so, uh, uh, good to have you back with us today. Good to have you here. And I realized that uh, Greg back there came in and won the service a little bit late. Uh, later than I had made my announcements or whatever, and I never did recognize him, but Greg Halcom has been with us for a few Sundays, and it's great to have you with us. Uh, announcements, I didn't bring a bulletin up, but this week I want to announce that Thursday is Thanksgiving, so of course there will be no, uh, no Bible study, no children's ministry. I hope you enjoy your day uh, with your family. Uh, so Thursday, Thanksgiving. The next Thursday, uh, we will not have a Bible study. We will help the, uh, the practice for the Christmas program. So if you want to come and be with us, that's probably what's going to be going on that Thursday. Please. <laughs> well, please come. Please. Pray. And also remember that the Christmas program is December, scheduled for December the 5th, and you want to tell people, and we look for uh, maybe some of the children's families to be with us, and looking for a great day there. Uh, any other announcements that I uh, need to announce, anybody? I have a prayer that I want to share. Okay. My son, Tom, had his golf, got his golf ladder out, and he You know, let's take some prayer requests. It is a, ought to be easy to go to prayer today. We started out singing these wonderful songs about uh, being thankful to God for all that He has done. So, you know, I believe that a big part of praying is thanking God for uh, who He is and that we uh, know Him. He cares about us and all those things. So uh, maybe a lot of our prayer ought to be just, just thanking God. Amen. Just thanking God for who He is and what He does for us. You know, He gave His Son. Yes. He gave His one and only Son Amen. so that we could be saved. Thank the Lord. Thank Amen. the Lord. But if there are uh, requests that you want to mention, uh, yes. My friend, thank you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together today here at this place. 
We thank you, Lord, for all that has been done that there would be uh, this place of worship, uh, to be here in this community. Father, we uh, thank you, Lord, that we can come and know that you will meet us here. We know, Lord, that you will be with us all through our life, Lord, you promised to be. And we thank you for that. Father, truly, you are good to your children. We thank you for all the many blessings, especially, Lord, that you would give your son, to give his life, Lord, that we could believe in him and have eternal life. Father, we pray now for the blessings uh, that you have uh, placed upon uh, all of our people and on this congregation, Lord, that we would turn around and make that to be a blessing to others. Father, we pray for the requests that have been mentioned here today. Father, you know all the needs. You know, uh, Father, about Peggy that lost uh, her husband, Father, and all the things that they would go through. We pray for them. Pray for Pat Gospel and her family. Pray, Father, for Justin Chambers, Lord, we want salvation to come. We pray, Father, for Susie, Lord, to be saved. Pray, Father, for each and every one that's lost, Lord, that they would realize that they need you. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and afflicted in some way. Father, we know that we have Ken that has uh, just had his surgery. Lord, we just pray that, uh, that Ken would continue to uh, recover and be stronger, and Lord, that you would help him. And Father, for Jim, that they, you'd help him as he uh, come, comes back, Lord, from his knee replacement. Lord, we just pray that you would be with him. Father, we pray for Judy's request today. Lord, her burden upon her heart. Father, our country, Lord, our nation, our, our the preachers and pastors, Lord, and churches, Father, to be as they should be. Father, we pray that you just have your rightful place in all of our hearts and lives. And Father, we can see your will be done. Father, we pray for that. Have your way, and we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. All right, our next song is on page 147. Have a great day.
Yes, they even come out and they sing with that song, and uh, I can hear that. It sounds good. All right. Usher's kind of blue TV this morning's night is not. Spirit is with us here, Lord God. We thank you for the peace and the joy and the love that you give us, Lord. Uh, we just uh, ask and pray, Lord, as we receive this offering for you, Lord God, that you bless it. That it would help build your kingdom, Lord, that the gospel can be advanced, that the souls can be saved, lives will be changed, Lord God. Lord, we just uh, pray that you will bless those that have to give and those that have not, Lord. Uh, we, just, uh, we just pray that this will be a pleasing and acceptable sacrifice to you.
You know, sometimes it's not so easy to find an attitude, a gratitude, words of thankfulness. Sometimes it's only when something that has happened that's bad that you find some kind of relief from or help in that we come to be thankful. But you know, our life can be really blessed. Uh, what I'm saying is, is we ought to be thankful all the time. We don't uh, need to be in those circumstances where 
we uh, have to be reminded or see that something could be lost or taken away that we become thankful that we still have it or regain it. We have so much to be thankful for. Yes. Amen. I believe most anybody could say that if they would recognize that there are things about just having life itself <coughs> that you have much to be thankful for. But we as Christians, believers in Jesus Christ, the saved, the redeemed, <coughs> we have so much to be thankful for. Amen. I think we could count our blessings, name them one by one. Yeah. And we would be here for a few days if we would do that. God is truly good to us. Do you know that everything that is good in your life is truly a gift from God? The Bible says in James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variable, no need of shadow of uh, turning. You think that's true? May I ask you, do you know Jesus? When we think of nothing better than you, there is nothing better than Jesus. Jesus tops the things, the list of things that God has done for us giving us his son. If you know Jesus today, you know that good things come from God. Paul writes to the Corinthians to give thanks. They were to give thanks for the gift from God. Give thanks. When you think of it, how can we appropriately give thanks to the one who has done so much for us? How can we appropriately do, appropriately do that? I'm thankful for the songs that give us words to say. I'm thankful for the songwriters that can pen words and really use them to praise God and thank God for who He is and what He has done for us. I know that uh, I don't have enough words to say what I should be saying to God and giving thanks for what He has done for me. How can we appropriately give thanks to the one who has done so much for us? Surely we must be grateful for all that God has done and especially for our salvation. But are words enough? Are words enough? Did you see the trial that's been going on for a while now? And, and did you see Kyle Rittenhouse when uh, the announcements came that he was judged and found not guilty? Did you all see that? Yeah. See the emotion and the collapse and all? And, you know, that just brought to my mind that, wow, how much he must be thankful. Sure. <clears throat> that things went as he would have hoped that they would have gone. You know, there was his life was in the hands of those jurors. He didn't really know what they would do. And they came back with the verdict of not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. They came back with a verdict that I'm sure he was so thankful. I know anyone would be, wouldn't you? We saw that. The defense attorney was asked after the trial, someone said, what did Kyle say to you? And he thought for just a couple seconds, I was watching him, and he simply said, he said, thanks. He said, thanks. Wow, is that all? Are words enough to express thanksgiving? <clears throat> when we say thank you, God, is that enough? He knows our hearts. He knows if we are thankful or not. 
He knows if we understand that he has saved us, he has called us to be his own, we belong to him. It cost a lot, it cost him his son. Jesus had to go to the cross to die. Thanks. Sometimes maybe that's all we can find that we have to do is just say thank you, Lord. I believe it should be kind of a given that we would want to serve him and live for him. We should love him. We should give our hearts and our lives to him. But sometimes when it comes down to a way of expressing our appreciation, our love for God, we simply just have to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Think about it. I look at that case that was tried, and I think there's so many more that would be like that. But when the verdict comes down that you are found not guilty, it would be one thing if you were innocent and it was uh, decided and heard, the evidence was heard and they declared you innocent. It would be another thing if you really were guilty and you got that verdict that you're found not guilty. Well, that's where I am with what God has done for me. And what I believe God has done for all of those who are saved. You see, I did the crime. I did the crime, but I don't have to do the time. He says, I forgive. And your sins are not counted against you anymore. But I did the crime. And you understand what I'm saying? How wonderful it is to have a God who would love us and be willing to forgive us. His grace is awesome. Doing the crime but not having to do the time. Deserving to be punished but Jesus took my sin. Don't you think we ought to be thankful? Don't you think we ought to thank God for what he has done? My just penalty would be to be punished, not just through this life, but for all eternity would be my just penalty. But God said, I forgive. Jesus said, I'll take your place. Your sins are not counted against you. I'm talking about being saved. I'm talking about being forgiven. I'm talking about having our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm talking about belonging to God. I'm talking about spending eternity with God. Yeah. I didn't deserve that. But He gave that to me. Amazing grace, how great it sounds. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Grace. Grace. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. Grace. It was. My fear is relief. Amen. How precious that grace appears. Through many dangers, colds, and snares, I have already come. It was grace that brought me safe this far. Grace will lead me on. And when we've been there 10,000 years, wow. Grace. God's amazing grace. Thank God for that. I want to tell you today, God's good. God is good. 2 Corinthians 9 15. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. I've been trying to share something today that would kind of remind us that God has done something for us that we did not deserve. Yes. He has done something to, for us that no one else could do. He has done something for us that probably no one else would do. Can you imagine that, Jack? 
the things you do, you sin against, we sin against God and He forgives us. Not only just forgetting and letting it go, but He gave His Son. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. We try to find words, but sometimes there are not enough words. King James Version says unspeakable. NIV or New King James would say indescribable. The English Standard Version would be inexpressible. The Good News Bible would say priceless. And the easy-to-read version would say a gift that is too wonderful to describe. And I don't have words to tell what God has done for me. Not enough words. The gift of God is indescribable and unspeakable. Unspeakable. The word unspeakable is found only three times in the King James Bible. First place is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses, or let me say that, in 2 Corinthians 12, 4, where it speaks of a heavenly experience that the apostle had, how that he was called up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Can you imagine? I can imagine what those words would be that he heard. You know, uh, I don't know how good your vocabulary is, and I don't know how many languages you can speak. But I believe that there were words that he heard that were never spoken here on this earth. The second place was in 1 Peter 1.8. It speaks of the Christian experience in relationship with our Savior and Lord. It says, Whom having not seen, you love, and whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We sing that song sometimes, taken straight from Scripture. Joy unspeakable and full of glory, and I have just never been told. Isn't it wonderful? But when we think about the gift of God and we try to bring words that will thank God for all that that includes and all He's done for us, we can't find them. Third place is found is in our text today. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable. Think about the unspeakable gift of God. How do you describe it? The Savior and the salvation He gives. You see, I think it's unspeakable because there's not enough words to tell. Not enough. If we knew all of the words of the English language, we wouldn't have enough words to tell. If we knew all of the words of all of the people of the world, we wouldn't have enough words to tell. <coughs> not enough words to tell. And besides that, there's not enough understanding to know everything that is included in what God has done for us. We are growing as Christians, I hope. We're learning more as we go. So therefore, as we're going and we are learning, how much more is there to learn? I don't know. But I would say there's a lot, wouldn't you? Sure. Oh, I love to listen to teachers, Bible teachers and Bible preachers, and when they share something with you that you can see for maybe for your first time that they have discovered, I, I really like that. I like that. But people are discovering things about the grace of God and the gift of God and things we don't understand about uh, the prophecies of the Bible and the things of eternity. We don't know. But we're learning as we grow. So I cannot thank God yet with words about what eternity will hold for us. 
but I believe that we can spend eternity thanking Him for all those things. Not enough understanding to know. And not enough composure to speak, and maybe that was part of why Kyle said just thanks. Not enough composure to speak. And I believe I have seen Christians come to that place where they are just so, so much in the presence of God that there's not words. Not able to speak the wonderful things of God. If we tried to find the words to thank God and praise God, it would have to be for all that Jesus said and did when he was here on earth. And I'm still enjoying and loving reading about what Jesus did while he was here on earth. Of all the pain and suffering that Jesus endured, I've seen videos that describe it. And I don't even know if they go far enough. The passion of Christ. If you've seen that, most people would have seen that. I don't know if it went far enough. But of all that the pain and suffering that Jesus endured, and besides that, those that Jesus loved and offered himself to that turned away. The pain and suffering that Jesus endured. How do we give thanks for all the sins that are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ? I'd hate to go back and just try to give thanks for the sins I know of in my life. But think of all the sins that have been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. There is so much to thank Jesus for. Of all the benefits for the believer that we have, that are ours, that we belong to God, that we uh, are heirs to the kingdom, we are all those things that are that belong to us because Jesus has given them to us. The benefits of the believer that you have someone that you can turn to, and He is the one, and you can look to Him no matter what you're going through. Thank God for that. Thank God that he walks with us through life and the difficulties of life and whatever it might be. He walks with us the benefits of the believer. Thank God that we can be part of his family, the family of God, and I thank God always for that. Thank God that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life and we know where we are going. Thank God for all the benefits for the believer. Thank God for all of the hell that the believer escapes. <coughs> yeah. I wouldn't plan on it. Let me share with you something I heard one time. There's a guy that worked in in a lab, and he had this chemical that would, uh, if you put it in water, it would, it would dry that water up. Kind of used for making things like uh, surgically clean, or making sure that you get all the moisture out of test tubes, or something like that. He went to a party, and he happened to have some of that with him. And so he was a little bit probably showing off, but you know how you get water around the drain in your sink? And so he took some of that chemical and he was showing them, and he'd throw that chemical in that water and fire would come up. And just fire would come up. And somehow that splashed on him. And of course, when they would take anything and try to remove that from him. If they used anything that was damp, fire would pop out. It, it would just make it worse. And 
and they finally got into the hospital. And when they got into the hospital, the only thing that they could do was to peel his skin off. <clears throat> to peel his skin off. Can you imagine that? But the speaker was using that to say that Hell would be worse than that, and it would be for all eternity. There would never be any end to it. I can't imagine how terrible hell is, but when we think about thanking God for what He has done, what we have to be thankful for, you can be thankful for all that we are delivered from and saved from that hell holds. And on the other side of that, you can be thankful for all that heaven holds. Amen. Sometimes you think about getting to see your loved ones, getting to be in a place where there's no sickness and there's no pain and there's no tears and there's no sorrow. How wonderful that is. And you get to see Jesus. You get to see Jesus. And spend eternity with Him. Thank the Lord. So thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. I spent just a few minutes here trying to share with you something that would maybe make you think. But I don't have words to say. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. Well, you can have that gift for your own if you don't know Jesus. All of those benefits for the believer can be yours. I don't care who you are. I'm going to share and close with these four things that you can be thankful for. Number one, Jesus never met a sinner he didn't love. Never one that he has loved. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Never met a sinner. He didn't love Number two, Jesus never met a sinner he wouldn't forgive. If you'll come to him, and he wants you to, he never met a sinner he wouldn't forgive. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul looked back on his life, I'm sure, and he said, of whom I'm chief. Thinking about all that he had done against Christ. Third, Jesus never, never met a sinner he couldn't change. He can change your heart. I don't care how bad you think you are or what you've done. That was his ministry. The blind would see, the lame would walk, the lepers would be cleansed, the deaf would hear, the dead are raised, the poor, to the poor the gospel was preached. He can change you. And fourth, Jesus never met a sinner he couldn't use or wouldn't use. 1 Timothy 1, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who, listen to this, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Jesus Christ. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. He never met a sinner that he wouldn't use. You know, he said,
sees you as valuable. Probably speaking to the most in here, or maybe all that would already be saved. But let me tell you today, if you're here and you're not sure, come to Jesus. Come to the one who loves you, gave his son, God gave his son Jesus to give his life that you could be his. So thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Amen. Let's stand together, singers come. Father, you are truly good. We know that everything that is good comes from you. And we know, Lord, that the greatest gift that we can understand, ever know, it's the gift of salvation. Lord, we thank you for that. Included in salvation is a new life. Included in salvation is forgiveness of sin and victory over sin. Included in salvation is our way to heaven. And Lord, we can be there with you for all eternity. Father, I pray that you would just do your work now. Help us, Lord, to draw close to you living for you, serving you, loving you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
a wonderful Thanksgiving. And uh, wow, you are a Christian if you're saved. <laughs> so much more to thank him for. Really. Isn't that true? So, all hearts clear? Anybody? Greg, I didn't ask you, but would you care to dismiss us in prayer? Okay. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, how much we do have to thank you for it. Lord, for everything you have done for us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this service this morning. Lord, for the presence that we feel this morning. Lord, how good thou art, Father Lord, as we sung that song long ago, how great thou art. Lord, I thank I just can't tell you enough, Father Lord. How thankful I am to have you in my life. Lord, I ask you, Lord, this morning, Lord, to be with each and every one that's here. Lord, each need. Father, Lord, as we can't hear it a lot of times, all those prayer requests, Father, Lord, of loved ones that are sick, that have needs. Lord, go to each home. Father, travel over the miles and be with each one, Father, Lord. And Lord, we do love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.